Hello everyone and welcome back to the ravings of a man who decided to make a video game from scratch as his midlife crisis at the ripe old age of 26. So for those of you new to the series, hello. I am Joseph and this is an episode in a video journal I am creating in order to document my progress of learning to create a video game from scratch. I started this journey knowing very little about video game design and development, and I still know very little. It's been like two weeks, give me a break. Anyway, in the last episode, we planned out our game, we started our project, built a simple movement controller, and started on the player management system, and that player management system is where we are going to pick up today. So, like I discussed in my previous video, the development process I'm using is what I'm calling rapid prototyping. Essentially, I establish some basic goals, plan out a prototype, and then get to work, only building what is absolutely necessary in order to get it to work, and then going back and revising and refactoring my code later on. The reason I'm mentioning this is because most of the features that I'm building out, especially early on in development, are just rough drafts that are likely to change in the very near future. I've personally found that focusing on rapidly building out these prototypes in an MVP or most valuable product type of model for large features and then refining it as I go on is just a really efficient workflow for me personally. With that being said, what I wanted to focus on for this revision of the player management system was just adding basic attributes or stats to the player that will increase the player's general power level. I initially added some public integers that would just get added to or removed, like when a player gains or lost agility, for example. But honestly, attaching it to the player in that specific of a way just seemed really inefficient. There's more related to an individual attribute than just a number, and honestly, it felt overwhelming trying to figure out and plan out all the different areas of an attribute. So I decided to do some research into better ways of handling this and came across something called scriptable objects. Now, I haven't used these too in depth, and I'm nowhere near an expert on scriptable objects, but looking at these, I realized that I could use these to kind of act like a definition for an attribute. I could have a name, an image if I wanted, the abilities that this attribute will modify, all managed in a single location, making it much easier to manage and modify. I also think I can use these scriptable objects in many other areas of this game, so I'm really excited that I found this out. But after learning the basics, I created a simple objects for one of the attributes, applied it to the player, created a very simple menu that displays the current attribute points and allows the player to increase specific attributes, and everything worked fairly well so far, so I added the other three attributes that I wanted and needed, and everything was looking pretty good. Speaking of looking good, have you guys ever noticed how good looking a gray subscribe button is? If you haven't yet, you should scroll down a bit under this video and make sure that you don't have one of those cringe red ones. Also, speaking of actually looking good, you may notice throughout this video that the floor tiles and the background just constantly change and get tweaked. Throughout the entire development process, whenever I get new art sent to me by my wife, I kind of just throw it in, test it out, and see how it looks. I'm planning on having a section of one of these videos specifically talking about the design of the game, but nothing's completely established yet, so I'll save that for later. Anyway, now with this system in place, I added the attributes that I needed, which are going to be tweaked slightly by the end of this video, but ended up being strength, agility, arcana, and vitality. And these attributes are what the player choice is going to kind of focus around in these runs. At the start of a run, you're going to start at level 1, but as you progress through a dungeon, you'll increase in level and you'll be able to custom fit a build just for your character. I really do want to maintain an element of actually building a character in an RPG style. Even though it is a roguelike game and there's a lot of randomization and you restart the run every time, I really like the idea of actually building a character and having it feel a little bit unique. So I do want this to be an integral part of the game and really heavily based on player choice. That being said, the attributes currently do nothing since there's no combat or anything in place, so I decided to move on to the next step of my prototype, which is building our first enemy. So the next step that I had defined in my prototype cycle was working on the enemies. This is going to be one of the largest areas down the road in terms of work needed, but for now I wanted something that I could just damage as the player and something that could damage me and had a little bit of a brain. And this started out really simple, just another box with some arrows, red arrows this time, and just set a lot of the same logic that the player has onto this enemy. The biggest difference is there's just predefined movement speed and there's no control associated with it. 
I also built in the ability for this object to have a jumping movement state as well as a stop movement state. I don't really know what exact enemies I'm going to put in place initially, but being able to walk, jump, and stop seemed like pretty core abilities, so I decided to add those in. They were easy enough to make, so why not? With the enemy able to walk in a straight line, I also added a waypoint system so the object or the enemy could patrol between different waypoints. I actually think this is going to be a very essential system to the enemies, and because of that, I made it very manual so I can kind of define how an enemy will path very specific to that enemy. I don't expect this to be automated, like X enemy will always have X waypoints. I really want to keep this a manual process because I want to make sure that I can really define how each enemy works on an individual level. I think that will really add a lot of flavor to the game. That being said, an enemy that just goes between a few points is kind of boring. So I adjusted the code slightly, gave the enemy an aggro range, and then set some code up to detect if a player is in that range. And if it is, well, the player is the new waypoint, so it'll just try to track and move towards the player until it reaches the player. With that in place, I gave the enemy an attack range and told it to stop when it hits the player and then added some health to the enemy. So to break it down, the enemy can walk, track a player, and has some health associated with it. So we now had some semi-intelligent objects that could swarm to a player, and it was now time to move on to the next step of this prototype. It's time to move on to some combat. So as with every other section of this prototype, I started out by planning how to best implement combat in the most basic form. I wanted to build in a simple yet scalable system so I have something that just worked for now but could be added onto later. I started by giving the player and the enemy some attack animations, which started out just being color changes just to get the placeholders in place. And then I started actually working on how damage will be applied. And the way I came up with is very simple. Basically, we set an attack point for each character, class, or enemy, and then for each type of ability based on its range, we draw a circle or a square depending on the type of attack, and we find any collisions that that new point makes while making its attack. If a collision is found on an object that is able to be damaged by that object, then we apply damage. And just like that, we had combat. It really isn't too complex or in-depth right now, but it's a base that we can play with and then build onto later. So with this in place, I spent the rest of the day just kind of refining and perfecting this, adding some very simple animations, as well as a system to apply and detect attack phases or combo steps for an attack type. And this will be used primarily for the player if there's a weapon that has like three short attacks and on the third attack it does a special animation and does more damage. I just wanted to get that base system in place because I do see that coming up very frequently. And before moving on, I added some health to the enemy, at least a visual indicator, so you can see what damage is being dealt, destroy the enemy if it has zero health, and I also added on a cast bar. Now this is something that is going to be very instrumental to the game because I like cast bars. Now I do understand that a lot of roguelites just have animations to signify when an enemy is going to do an ability, but one thing I really like about World of Warcraft specifically is being able to manage interrupts and knowing what to interrupt and when to interrupt it, so I want a full in depth interrupt system in this game. The way that I kind of have it sketched out now is that each ability will have a cast timer, and when the cast is started, there will be a random point kind of in the middle of the cast that if that enemy is interrupted, something happens. Maybe it takes some damage or it gets stunned a little bit, and this will be used as a way to give the player some skill expression, knowing what enemies to focus the interrupts on, what enemies to dodge, and really being on top of timing interrupts. It's just a concept that I really think I'm going to personally enjoy, so I want to build it in. But for now, since interrupting isn't in place, I just added a visual cast bar and then moved on to the final step of this prototype. So with combat done, I really finished my first real prototype. I had a working system in place where we could actually play a game. This is what I sent to a bunch of my friends and they've been playing it and testing it out just to give me some basic feedback on the feel of the game. But with this in place and with this prototype done, it was time to go over everything I had written before and look at what I needed to revise and refactor. At this point, there was quite a bit of code that was just undocumented, some pieces of the code that needed to be refined and other areas that I wanted to refactor altogether. Now, I'm not a master game designer yet, but I have learned quite a bit and I do want to make sure that I stay on top of keeping my 
my code up to date. If I build something today, but then a week later find a better way of doing it, I want to use these end of prototype steps as a way to go and make those upgrades. I don't want to constantly be changing my code whenever I learn something new because that's relatively inefficient. So these refactoring portions of the prototype are going to be incredibly essential. I'm hoping that being diligent with these sections of the prototype, I will kind of keep myself from getting too much technical debt within this code base. And I'll just be able to be familiar with everything by routinely reviewing everything. And it should help ensure that by the time this game is finished, the entire code base is something I'm proud of and something that I would consider up to par. But with that, well, that's all I got for the video. If you're enjoying the content and you're looking forward to the next one, the concepts I'm planning on going over are some simple player animations. And if you want a sneak peek for those, check out my Twitter. Some additional movement abilities, some additional level elements like one-way platforms, and the player heads up display. So if you do want to be notified when that video goes live, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And while you're down there, like the video if you did enjoy it. That all being said, that is all I have for this video. Again, I hope you guys did enjoy it. I am Joseph. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. And I will see you next time.